Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. What an amazing experience. That's the perfect imagery of the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, this is the hope of our world. This is the hope of the earth. This is the hope of humanity. The kingdom of God, God to be the king in, on this earth, king of the, of the kingdoms. And he is so. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And when we see Christ as when he came, he fulfilled the kingdom of God and he preached the kingdom of God. So we can be like full of the hope that when the kingdom of God appears here on earth and appears here on earth means that it's in your house, it's, it's here and, and now, it's in your circle, it's in your area, it's everywhere. When, when Christ is the ruler, when Christ is the king, really, so the kingdom of God can be accomplished, can be there. And this is the hope of humanity. See, this is a very interesting imagery of humanity. Humanity is manifested here in this paralytic. And if we see that this paralytic, in medically speaking, this person was paraplegic. So, the original word means a, a quadriplegic, I mean, not paraplegic, quadriplegic. So he was paralyzed, arms and legs. And all the medical people, they know quite well what quadriplegia means. This person is incontinent. This person is unable to help himself. It's a very sad and horrible situation when a person is in that situation for so long. He had no hope. And that's the exact situation of humanity. That's all of us. That's you and me. So broken, we can't help ourselves. Dependent. Have nothing to do except to wait for others so that we can be helped. This is how the potential of the human person is when this person is away from the kingdom of God. And that's why Christ came. Christ came on earth. Christ, the Son of God, appeared in the flesh. That's the good news for the humans. Not only appeared on the flesh as God, but as God-man. And that's the amazing uh, good news God man means that he is God and he is man. He took the form of a humanity, the broken humanity like you and me, and declared that the kingdom of God is here and now. So who, who, who were those four men that carried that quadriplegic men? Who, was, uh, 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 who were these four men uh, who carried him? Actually, sometimes we reflect on that, saying they are good friends. They, have, they are the servants of God, and they are good people. Yes, but to my mind, they reflect something more. They are not just good people, and we just lament our situation because we don't have such blessed and good people that would help their friend in that, in going like the extra, extra, extra mile. So, who are these four? I can say pillars, not men, but pillars. These are the four pillars that can carry the broken humanity to God. And when these four pillars are fulfilled, the broken humanity, you and me and the earth and all the world, can be healed through being in the presence of Christ. So, those four pillars are... Actually, it's, uh, it's there in today's readings. And that's the commission of every one of us. If you can uh, see the, um, the Matins um, Gospel, it, the Matins Gospel, it ends by...
Christ giving the uh, disciples the great commission. See, see um, what it says here. Uh, it's the end of the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and I'm with you now and forever. That's the great commission of the church. That's the great commission of every single believer in Christ to take these words from the mouth of Christ and go in his name and help others. So again, we are commissioned <clears throat> to uh, carry the broken and the paralytic humanity before Christ. Then, what are these four corners or pillars that would carry the broken humanity? Number one, uh, we can see it in, um, in the epistle of St. Paul uh, to the Corinthians. It's the, uh, the Pauline epistle of today. Uh, because uh, St. Paul says in verse 15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ. So the first pillar that would carry the broken humanity to Christ is to be the fragrant of Christ, the fragrance of Christ, to have the fragrance of Christ in you. So it's the first pillar to have the fragrance of Christ, and the second pillar, just uh, name them, list them, and then we can talk a little bit about everyone. So to, to be um, the fragrance of Christ is number one. To be the epistle of Christ is number two. And to be the spiritual house is number three. And then to have faith in what you're doing, that what you are doing will help others, will bring uh, healing and forgiveness of sins for the broken humanity. So let's... Uh, let's focus on every one, every single pillar of these four pillars. So let's start with the first one, the fragrance of Christ. How to be the fragrance of Christ? How to have this fragrance? You know that fragrance, it's, it's a, it's a sweet-smelling aroma. It's fragrance. How can we get that? Again, uh, according to the Holy Fathers, the Bible tells you everything. So if you want to know a thing, just search the Scriptures. Search the scriptures. So we can see in the book of the so uh, Song of Songs, in chapter 3, verse 6, um, it says that, who is this who is fragrant with myrrh and frankincense? Fragrant with myrrh and frankincense. So, to be the fragrant of Christ is to have these two aromas. To be, um, to, or to have this myrrh in your life. And we all know that myrrh is something bitter, right? And it's always in the scriptures, myrrh is a symbol of sufferings. And when they presented the gifts to Christ, do you remember that? When the Magi presented gifts to Christ, they gave him myrrh, right? So this is a sign of his sufferings. So myrrh means, means that you will suffer for Christ. And these sufferings will be your asset of helping others. And when I checked uh, myrrh, some like background about myrrh, I found out that this is um, this is a chemical that relieves pain. So mirror is a chemical that relieves pain, kills bacteria, and has an anti-inflammatory properties. Ah, that's amazing. So it's a, it, it alleviates the pain of others. It kills the bacteria. We all know that the bacteria, these are the, the pathogens. These are the enemies of, especially the harmful bacteria, they are the enemies of, of humankind. So they can cause diseases and can cause death. So they can kill the bacteria. This myrrh can kill the bacteria. 
and it has an anti-inflammatory. There is an inflammation going on inside that person, and it needs kind of alleviation, and this is the reason why it alleviates pain. So to have your sufferings for Christ and to share it with others and to carry it for others, this is a kind of healing. This is what causes you to bear the fragrance of Christ. That's why in the, um, in the scriptures it says that we are healed by the stripes of Christ, right? By his stripes you are healed. How can the stripes of Christ heal you and me? These are his sufferings. And that's a mystery in itself. So this fragrance of Christ is through mirror and frank incense. And to be honest, frank incense is actually what Abuna is doing or putting in the censer. So Abuna is putting incense in the, um, in the uh, censer. And once the censer has those um, coals of fire, uh, now the, the, the incense is rising up and this is a symbol of the prayer. So the frank incense reflects the life of prayer. If you want to have the fragrance of Christ in you, you have to have this life of prayer. So your prayers, what you do in your inner chamber, is a kind of great help for others. Sometimes you just belittle the importance of, uh, uh, of being in your chamber and praying. Oh, I'm wasting my time. Or I just, I, I, I want to do it in a very quick way so I can finish and go to my other stuff. But you can't imagine that your, your, your time in prayer is a great help for others. And this is the real help that we can do for the, all those who are suffering around us. So your sufferings, your prayers, they will cause you to have the fragrance of Christ. And this is the root, this is the secret of healing for others. That's one pillar. What's the other one? You are the epistle of Christ. St. Paul says so. You are the epistle of Christ in this uh, Pauline epistle of today. You are the epistle of Christ. And when you think about this term or, the, or this idea, epistle, what does it mean? It's like, it's like a message. So any message or any epistle should have a sender and a one uh, um, that it's sent to and a content or a subject and then finally a seal on the epistle. So... This epistle, you and me, are the epistle of Christ. What does this mean? Number one, it's sent from Christ. You are sent from Christ to be uh, like a comfort for others, to be a, a source of healing for others. If we take this commission uh, into our heart and really believe in it, that you are sent to help others, you will be such a peacemaker, a God-bearer. See, our holy fathers, they used to be called God-bearers. God-bearers. They bear God. So they, they can bring God to others in this way. If you are a God-bearer, so once you are there at your work, so you are God-bearer. He's there. Christ is there. But just hidden inside you. People can see you, but Actually, Christ is there in this or that area or this or that work or place. That's our message. That's our commission to the broken humanity to be Christ-like when you are God-bearers. So this, the, the message or the epistle is sent from Christ. To whom this message? To all of those who are around you. The message is not, not sent to the Christians, of course. The message is sent to the whole world. So there is a message from Christ to the whole world. And what's the subject? Just two words. You are beloved. So the subject that you should carry to others, that all or and every single human being is beloved by God. That's the good news. God loves you. 
Do not just few words where God used to, but these words caused Christ to be crucified. This is the Son of God crucified for every single person, for every human being. And this crucifixion or this cross is a sign of his love for you. So the subject is God's love. And what's the sea? What's the seal of this message or epistle? It is the cross. It is sealed by the cross of Christ as a sign of his love. When you carry this message to others, others are loved by Christ. Christ, Christ took your form. Christ feels for you. He took the form of your broken humanity and understands what, what's going on inside you. So you will never find a friend like him. A friend who went through all the paths of suffering that we, we suffer every single day. So you are the fragrance of Christ. You are the epistle of Christ. And then you are called to be the spiritual house of Christ. When there is a spiritual house, really, so those broken people can come in. And that's the presence of Christ that would heal others. What do, did they, these four men do? Actually, they opened the ceiling and they just brought that paralytic person in the presence of Christ. This is all what they did. They didn't preach him. They didn't talk to him empty words. No. They brought him in the presence of Christ. And that's your and my responsibility for all our all of those who are around us. It's, it's your responsibility to bring your, your household before Christ, your sons and daughters, your spouse, your neighbors, every person who is around you to bring him before Christ and then let Christ do his work with that person. That's all what you should do and that's it. So again, together we make a spiritual house so others can be in the presence of Christ. And that's what the church is, what the church is commissioned to do, to be the spiritual house so that others can come or the unbelievers can come or those who are suffering and struggling can come inside and see Christ within us, Christ in our midst. And then uh, the fourth corner or pillar, I can say that this is the faith in what you're doing. Sometimes we don't have faith in what we're doing. Ah, we serve and this is what we can do and that's it. No. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw their faith. So faith here means something that should be done. It's not kind of like an intellectual thing or having a, like a right doctrine. It's not like that. Faith here is something to be done. It's a work. And that's how the Holy Fathers understood how faith is related to works. So this is the faith that causes you to help others. If you have a Christian faith that's inside you, yes, I believe in the Holy Trinity. Yes, I believe in the church. Yes, I believe in all what the doctrine of the church is. But you have no works. So this faith is dead. It can't move any person around you. Actually, sometimes this kind of faith repels others, makes others hate this kind of faith because this is not the faith that would bring love to others. We are commissioned to do that. And we should have these four pillars or corners so that we can carry others to the presence of Christ. Be the fragrance of Christ through your sufferings, through your, uh, your prayer life. Be the epistle of Christ carrying the message from him to others with the subject of they are loved. And the seal is his cross. Let's together make this spiritual house of the presence of God among us so others can find Christ in our midst and can get their healing and forgiveness of sins. And let's have faith in all what we do. This faith will make us uh, to, as Abuna said it before, 
uh, and this is uh, 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 an amazing theological concept, the liturgy after liturgy. You will go, after we finish liturgy, you will go to others preaching the good news that I believe that God has a healing for you, has a forgiveness of sins for you, and that's the hope of the broken humanity, and glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed are they in truth, the sins of this day, each one of course.